Cynthia D'Amelio here with Mahalo Daily at the second day of Comic Con 2008, and I have with me now Phil Plate, who is an official professional astronomer and blogger and author, and he's going to tell us about all of those things. Phil, thanks for <laughs> talking with us. Thanks for having me on. I love Mahalo, so this is very cool. All right, awesome. Well, first, um, tell me a little bit about your background in astronomy and and how you made the conversion from practice to preaching, I guess. Yeah, I, I was doing research, actually. I got my PhD, was working on Hubble, and stayed on that for a long time, and just decided that I enjoyed talking about it and teaching people about it more than actually doing it. Uh, and most research astronomers, you have to be kind of driven to do the research, and I was more interested in, in public outreach. So I started writing magazine articles, started up a website. Now I've got a blog and a book, and I'm just having a great time. I'm here at Comic-Con, actually, talking about the science and science fiction uh, I had a panel yesterday, a huge amount of fun. So this has been a total blast. Awesome. Now the website is badastronomy.com. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about how you developed that. Oh, well, back in 1993, actually, seriously, in March, the first day of spring, there was a newspaper... Uh, uh, okay, cut. Um, <laughs> One of the local news stations was showing kids standing eggs on end, and there's this old legend you can only stand eggs on end on the first day of spring. And it's, it's baloney, that's garbage. It has nothing to do with the seasons, which are astronomical. It's just eggs, you can stand them up if you're patient and you do this. And so I wrote about it, and people used, you know, mosaic to look at this, and they had, I had a hyperlink in that page, yes, in 1993, very advanced. Uh, and over time, the website grew and grew, it got huge. I had a newsletter that morphed into a blog once the blogging software came out. And in fact, uh, in July of 2008, I was actually, uh, I sold out to the man. And Discover Magazine, actually, uh, my blog has moved to them. So badastronomy.com is still my website, but the blog has now moved to blogs.discovermagazine.com uh, slash badastronomy. It's a mouthful. But if you go to badastronomy.com, redirects you right there. Wow, well, congratulations. Thank That's you. awesome. I'm really, really actually pretty chuffed about that. It's cool. Now, from your writing experience with the blog, um, does it, is this what inspired you to write the book? Yeah, my first book was called Bad Astronomy, and it's, it's a lot of the same misconceptions. And that's what I write about, are myths and misconceptions about astronomy. Uh, I just expanded it for the book and went into a little more detail and had a lot more fun with it. Um, so it was a lot like the website, but in printed form that people had to pay for, so that I could eat dinner, for example. You know, that's a good thing. Uh, wrote magazine articles, did a lot more online stuff, and now my second book, Death from the Skies from Viking, Doo -doo 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 -doo. coming out October 20th, all the ways astronomical events can wipe out life on Earth. So we're talking asteroid impacts, chapter one. That's the easy stuff. Get Sounds out. like a movie to me. Well, I was thinking a 10-part documentary series, but a movie would be fine if any directors or producers are watching right now. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it starts off with asteroid and comet impacts. I've got solar flares, nearby stars exploding, black holes passing through the solar system, and the eventual uh, death of the universe. So it's a really uplifting, feel-good book. Uh, yeah, actually, um, I had a lot of fun with it. I'm joking around. I talk about the science of it, uh, but I also talk a lot about the, the, the odds of these happening. Now, if we do nothing, we're going to get hit by an asteroid, but we can do stuff about that. Uh, but worrying about a nearby star exploding and that sort of thing, the odds are so low, you don't have to worry about it. So it's kind of like riding a roller coaster. It's scary while you're on it, but you know you're eventually going to get off and everything's fine. That's pretty much how these things are. You don't have to lie awake at night, you know, sweating and panicking about them. But it's kind of fun to think about them, so that's why I wrote the book. Very cool. And one last question for you. Just on that note, a lot of comics are actually sort of infatuated with space or set in space in sort of this futuristic world. What do you think it is about astronomy and, and sort of the other dimensions and galaxies that is so fascinating to people? They're cool. Hello? Astronomy, astronomy has always been interesting. It's just, it's beautiful. You can go out on the night sky. It's very relaxing to look up at night and, and lie on your back and look at the stars. You might see a shooting star. Um, but then, you know, once you start getting telescopes, especially telescopes like Hubble, these pictures come back that are gorgeous. And, you know, Saturn and these galaxies and all this stuff is beautiful. And so it really sparks our imagination. I wonder if there's life out there. And being able to travel there is it's just, the, it's just like the ultimate adventure. And I think that's why shows like Star Trek and Doctor Who and all these, uh, all these great uh, uh, science fiction shows, they do so well. They're so popular. But it is certainly, you know, people say, oh, I don't get into science fiction. Oh, but do you watch The X-Files? Oh, yeah, sure, I watch that. Hello, you know. So there's an element in almost every really popular TV show, major comic 
book movie that, yeah. that has been out right now. Some, you know, a little alien or... Yeah. It's just, it's cool stuff. Staring at the moon, at least. Yep, and so pe people dig it. Yeah, exactly, you know, and it, it's just, it's a lot of fun, and so it's a great topic for stuff, and it, it's a, a little bit escapist, you know, that's okay, but it's still, it's something that we yearn to do, is to travel out into space and go see things, these things up close. And, you know, look, I got the bug. I watch, you know, Eureka and Doctor Who and Star Trek and all that stuff. I love it. Cannot get enough of it. Awesome. All right, well, it's been great talking with you, and you can go to uh, badastronomy.com to find out more about the release of his book and all the other cool projects uh, that you're working on now. And for all of the videos that we've had here at Comic-Con so far, you can find them on mahalo.com or go directly to our YouTube channel, mahalo.com. That's M-A-H-A-L-O-D-O-T-C-O-M. From Comic-Con 2008, I'm Leah D'Amelio for Mahalo Daily. We'll see you next time.